What's up scrollers, it's Nerf here, and today we are going to do our first judgment run since uh, the update. So Echoes changed judgment a lot. Now you can sacrifice for wild without any restrictions, so um, in other matches you have to have uh, at least, like you have to have all the other resources uh, in your deck sacked for before you can sacrifice for wild. Um, if you know wild resource is just resource that can be used for anything. So basically in judgment now is all the like order, growth, decay, energy, we can forget about that. We just have to pay attention to the number because we all they all cost wild and we can sacrifice for wild. So it's really cool, it might be more fun now. I heard people like it more because uh, the new judgment um, it's faster paced the decks are better because you can just pick whatever scrolls you want and might have a little less strategy but really competitive strategy format is really ranked and tournament play judgment I think should be more fun so I like this change and we'll see if we enjoy it today so yeah it's gonna be kind of strange I don't have to really worry about what color uh, the things are in so I'm just gonna take the best scroll on the row and uh, probably aging knight Wing Soldier is not that good. It's a 3 2 2. I'd rather take the Aging Knight. You can put that down on turn 1 and really mess some people up. Uh, now we have Pickaxe Phones here. That's one of the new Echoes things. Kabon, Crazy Venture, Desperation. Uh, should I just take the creature or no? I'm going to have access to a lot of creatures, so it's, it's kind of strange. Probably the best scroll to take would be a Kabonk. Nice cantrip, I'll just take it. Now, looks like I'll take a spark here. Always good to have removal. Um, so we have one one drop and two two cost spells. So we have a two cost creature. Uh, that we're going to take that. Controlled lightning is a new echoes thing. It's a form of, I guess, a spell removal kind of thing. Uh, and then pack husk. See the, I think I'll just take the Pack Husk. Pretty good creature. Uh, I think Pack Husk might be the, one of the strongest Echo Scrolls. You play it and it has four health, so it's really good. And then uh, you draw a scroll from it when it dies. So I'll take the Pack Husk. And now, easy choice here. I'll take the Blast Automaton. Uh, that two armors may be very good. Now. You might think Imperial Resources is good, but not really for Judgment anymore because it will give you order and you don't need order, you need wild. So I don't need to take the Imperial Resources. I'm going to take probably the Niara here because I'll have so many different kinds of creatures. I'll always get so much attack from it. So I definitely like the Niara here. Although uh, Ogre is good, Darkling is good too. Uh, you definitely want the Niara. Also, it goes for a lot on the black market. Here, Gravelock Guard, just best creature on the row, and I don't know if I'm going to have direct L damage. Uh, so I think with this new judgment, you're going to have to look at your curve more. Also, there's only 35 picks instead of 45 picks, which means that you can't have any, like, you can't have as many, like, bad picks. That's my curve. A 4 drop would be nice, but Snorgle is not that good. I don't like Snorgle. Uh... So I think I'll take the Sister of the Fox instead. I like to play spells, so I don't like Snarl. Here, I could take Charge Coil or Eager Spire. I'll take the Eager, uh, Charge Coil because Eager Spire really needs enchantments to work, and I don't have any of those yet. Um, I mean, like, attack enchantments. So I will take the Charge Coil. Now, looks like Gravelock Freak, although it's not amazing by itself. It's still a nice, big, healthy creature. And these things, I don't have a lot of humans right now. And these one drops are not that good. All right, here, uh, Frontal Blast is okay. Removal. The rest of this stuff is eh. I mean, Desperation. Okay, we already have a bunch of two cost spells though. Draining Mist can really stop my opponent. I'd rather just have the removal though. Uh, do I take Bear Paw, Nice Enchantment, or the Clock Library? I think I'll be taking the clock library because my creature, I didn't take the Eager Sire, my creatures on my board right now don't really benefit that much from enchantments. Like they're not one countdown or, or 
creatures or relentless creatures. I guess more health than the blast automaton would be good. But I think it's better just to get the clock lever here. That's like it's my first uh, four cost thing too. That's as important. Uh, now probably a champion ring here. Best scroll here. None of these scrolls are that good. Uh, okay, we got some nice, powerful stuff coming up. Battle dance is is the music on? Let me just make sure. All right, whatever. Battle Dance, one of the new Echo Scrolls. It was three costs in the test server, so I thought it might have a chance to make it into some decks. But not at four cost. Fury might still be a better option. I'm not sure. Do I take it here though? Probably because Frostbeard is not a very good creature, and these scrolls are not so good either. So I'll take the Battle Dance. Uh, Blast Automaton or Brother of the Wolf. I want a nice big creature here. Probably Blast Automaton. Two Blast Automatons is really nice. Uh, yeah. Next, uh, I have, I could take a Gusty Essence Garb. Again, I don't have really creatures that benefit from enchantments that much, so I'll take the Gusty here. How many creatures do we have? We have nine creatures. I'll be wanting about 15 creatures. Uh... I'd, obviously memorials don't really help well but actually you yeah, know it would actually increase my resources by two but why would I play scroll to do that uh, lingering spell do I have any lingering spells I don't there is a lingering spell right here I don't think I'm going to take it though because I don't really have undead creatures I guess I'll take the nog nest the best two drop on this row or the best unit on that row a lot of two cost stuff so far for me. Gravelock Raider, it is a Gravelock, so it would help my Gravelock Freak attack, but it really is bad. It needs it needs attack buffs, which I only have a champion ring so far. I do have a Gravelock Elder here, which I will be getting because the rest of this row is kind of eh. I mean, Revenant's okay. But yeah, I will be getting the Gravelock Elder here. So do I take the Raider here, or do I take the Ancestral Pact, which is the other option? Or I could take Purification. You never know when that can come in handy. You know what? I think I'm going to take the Purification. Yeah, Gravelock Raider just doesn't do enough for me. I don't really like him. So there's the Elder now. Okay, wow, this row is packed with good scrolls. Here, I will be taking... Yeah, Replenish... Replenish used to be the best thing in Judgment, but now we don't really need it. Uh, I guess Grounds of the Fallen? Do I have mostly humans? No, Grounds of the Fallen wouldn't really do much good for me. Elon Vital, Generation 1, Energy, and this. Alright, I'll take the Elon Vital. I might not use it though. Spotted Lynx or Wing Spear? Well. I think straight up Wing Spear is better than Spotted Lynx. Spotted Lynx, that th three counts on really uh, made it from OP to slightly below average. It just, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it. I think I'll take the Wing Spear. Uh, you, you can maneuver it so it usually gets a value. So I'll take that. Now what do I need? A three drop or a four drop? Looks like four drops a more pressing need for me. So I'll take the Stitcher in this case. Uh, Harvester wouldn't be a bad play. Neither would Pack Husk, but I want to get a four drop down. Because I'm going to get a five drop here. I have a Knight Sergeant. Though I don't have any other Knights, he's just going to be a three, two, five. It's not like anything else in this row is really popping out at me. Oh boy, a God Hand. And we could just take that because we can go up to high resources if we want to. Uh, we will take a. I'm not gonna wait for the clock lever to go off. I think I'm just gonna take another purification here. Why not? Yeah, we have a lot of creatures, so I think I'm just gonna take the god hand and see what happens. Uh, corpse theft is a really cool scroll I want to see being used. Now, which three job? Magnathor or Steelwood Vindicator? I think the steel would. Magathor, yeah, it, current energy resource. Cards that have to do with that, like a 
specific research won't really do well in judgment because you only have wild. Now the corpse collector, I guess. Solid four drop. Uh, now we have 15 creatures, so we'll be okay. Uh, okay, oak blood or infested husk. That's tough. Oak blood plus six health. Infested husk. I'll always get value out of that. Do I have things that really need a lot of health? Not really, but you, you know it could always come in handy. I'll take the oak blood for that reason. Thank you. And now... Transposition. You never know when you'll need that. Another pack husk is good. A squire or a kinfolk ranger? I guess kinfolk ranger purely because of the... Or actually... Squire, because it's gonna get things counted down with my Night Sergeant. I was gonna say Kindle Ranger just because the Consolidator and Niara uh, would have a, something with a Kinfolk in it to add the two attack, but Squire has good synergy with uh, my Night Sergeant. Um, Esmoran Scholar. Definitely take him. He's a solid 4 drop. It's a lot, this is my first time playing with a lot of these Echo Scrolls. And now there's a Solemn Giant, Decimation, or Consolidator, Niara. So, if you didn't know, Solemn Giant can count down with Wild. So, he would be pretty decent. Or do I want a second Niara? I probably only want one Niara because... I mean, maybe I should take two Niaras because they're worth a lot right now in the game and I could sell it. Now, I just want to get my five wins. I'll take the Solemn Giant for that reason. Uh... Actually, no, I really want to get the Solic, the Niara's out. My deck kind of is all about that. And then a Wildling, which I can get the Elk Blood on. So I believe this deck is very good. Decent curve, lots of creatures. So let's add all the scrolls and take out five. Anything that we definitely don't need. I guess we don't need 35 creatures. Okay, what are the weakest scrolls? I wish you could sort by cost without having it sort by faction. That would be useful. Um, I guess Alamba Tall we might not need. Uh, yeah. I'll get rid of that. I guess it could be good in like a Blast Auto, but whatever. Um, do we really need the Attack Enchantment? I guess we do have a Relentless Unit here with the Steelwood Vindicator. Hmm. I don't think we're going to want to wait for a Clock Library to go off. So I will go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, we'll only have one purification. We can take out. What do we have? Do we have a lot of two drops or something? Lots of two drops. I wish I could see how spells and what whatnot. But I don't think we need. We probably don't need the wing spear. And then I'll get rid of maybe the transposition. Or that can really help the transposition, can't it? I should get rid of the Inferno Blast. Doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. Okay, so how's our deck looking? Pretty good. So we'll save this as QWERTY because Judgment decks do not matter what you save. Actually, I'm going to change this as first Judgment deck. First Echoes Judgment. Because I believe they changed it so that you can see your judgment deck. Uh, how do you do this? It's still five wins, two losses. Deck options. Uh, yeah, cool. View deck. All right, nice. You can see the deck. You can't change it though. You can't like you don't have a sideboard of five scrolls. But it's nice to be able to see your deck without. Ha and then uh, that just means you're withdrawing this judgment run. All right, we're going to start here with the first match. I'm watching this in the new replay uh, mode in scrolls. Uh, it's in the spectate menu. You just click on the top right to replay. So it came off echoes. Uh, it saves all the matches for like nine days as long as they were spectatable. Uh, both players had to have spectate on and you could rewatch it. And what's nice about it is that it cuts out all the downtime. So there's no thinking time it's all just straight up action just keep playing and playing things 
uh, so you don't really have to speed up the video and it, the video won't be that long like this. So I think this might be a good idea for future judgment videos including this one, I'll try it out with this one. Uh, so, so far, uh, oh yeah, also, take note, I'm on the right side, which is a little strange. You would probably expect me to be on the left side, but the game replay got it, got me in the right. Really, for all replays of yourself, uh, I think you should be on the left, but whatever. But what's very strange here is the avatar, my avatar is this, and it's on the left side, and Kunelo's avatar is on the right side when he, he's playing on the left side. And you see, that sifting screen was so fast, uh, because, I don't know, it's not sped up, but I guess it takes out all the time of me thinking, uh, of me thinking what to take. So, so far this game, it's, uh, pretty close. Um, he's able to get more kills, and he has Pestis going on, nice, he has a nice creature so far, so he's probably slightly ahead, but I know my deck has, my deck is really good. Also, it's nice to see, you can see the chat as well. So I might do this kind of stuff for future videos, obviously not live videos, but this could be a better option than recording stuff and playing it back like a time lapse. So he gets Infectious Blight down, which is unfortunate, I lose the attack from him, and at least it didn't go on my uh, Armor 2 dude, I didn't want him to get be getting hurt, and I'm in an okay ass, sorry. Uh, I'm in an okay position now because he is forced to either destroy the Infectious Blight, and he can't even uh, poison my guys with the Mangy Rat because uh, I have Armor 2 which takes zero damage from the Mangy Rat. I mean, poison humans don't deal any damage. Uh, don't poison stuff, it deals no damage. And I got lucky there. See, Kunilos is uh, raging in chat. Um, the Mangy Rat uh, spawn was pretty perfect for me. I use a, a Battle Dance there and I'm able to uh, destroy most of his board. So that was really like the big turnaround play in this game. Now he's just looking at a few powerful creatures and he doesn't have powerful creatures of his own. So now I uh, have... He has more creatures on the board though. But I'm at 6, three, six wild. I can play really whatever I want. My deck has a lot of powerful creatures. I'll be able to get another blast ottomans on here. I have a spark for that crossman or the Gragadolf soon. And now Kunelos has interesting stuff in his hand. He plays a New Orders. And I'm not really sure what he was thinking here. It's like... Just to put that in front. Um, I'm not sure if that was worth it. Also, what's nice about replays is you can see the opponent hand, of course. Um, when I just used to record my screen for judgment and just speed it up, you couldn't see the opponent's hand. That's definitely good. And I'm just going to try to get the Niara out next turn, but I had to kabonk this turn just so I can destroy all the attacking units. It's always a shame wasting 5 attack on a 1 health unit. But what you gotta do, what you gotta do, just kind of stay ahead in this match. He has a Nuru, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get to 8 resources uh, very soon. He does get a Blind Rage there, which is gonna, it was a lucky draw for him. He's able to, he's able to take out my uh, Blast Auto. So that was a big play-ish. Uh, but I do have a spark for that, which means it's going to delay me playing in the Niara another turn. Niara is just so powerful in this deck. really want to get her out, but I have to just destroy what he's playing down faster. And he is just going up to 8, uh, trying to play that Nuru, but he's just wasting his turns while he's at it. So now, I finally get the Niara out, and I know I can get the really high attack, and he just surrenders. So that is win one for me for Judgment, and uh, now we're going to the second game. Game two, now I am still like this, I'm on the right, but uh, my avatar is on the left. And I do mulligan, I think I probably got a slightly worse hand. He has a pretty aggressive start as well. I start off uh, with just playing a Nognus trying to get that to count down and get Nognus from it as soon as I can. He begins, I believe he started playing the Pickaxe Volunteer. Uh, he has a bunch of options. If I were him, I probably would have played the Grave Vault Guard, but I guess he wants to get some big idle damage generally. Pickaxe Guard, one of the uh, Echo units. Idle Strike 4. And now. 
he's able to get a storm runner out, which is really now it looks like he's probably he's like leading the game. Probably should have had the pickaxe volunteer in front of it. This pickaxe volunteer is much more disposable than the storm runner. But that storm runner is very scary. Uh, I am going to get Nogs next turn, and I do have some things on the board, so it's not looking too bad for me. He goes ahead and plays a clock library. Plays it up top where I can get to it, so maybe that was the wisest decision. I get my Nogs down, and uh, I get rid of the God Hand, I'm able to play a Blast Auto. So although that Storm Runner is about to attack, he didn't really follow my creatures, so he can't really destroy much. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, it doesn't seem like Piku Peiko is that experienced. Uh, he plays a spark on that, which doesn't really do anything, but damage it right now. And he plays a little dark. And uh, now I have a chance to just put things down. He deals a huge chunk of idle damage, but that's all right. Uh, I, yeah, I sacrificed the Freak for scrolls because Blast Auto is just really good. I'll just play another one. Freak is only really that good with other Grave Locks. I do have another Grave Lock on the board. I'd rather just get down the double Blast Autos, though. So he does take out an Idol already. Uh, I'm not sure what he has that has Dominion. There we have a uh, Bog Hound, so that Idol take out from the Darkling does increase his attack, but it looks like that Bog Hound is going to die soon. Because the King Warden Man kind of protects kind of weirdly. He really should have protected that Storm Runner. That's really his only way of staying in the game here. But with leaving that Storm Runner open like that, I'm not sure of the point there. And also, my Blast Auto can come in and deal a lot of damage to him uh, just on moving up. So maybe he didn't know about Blast Auto's ability and he didn't value the Storm Runner that much. Uh, maybe a newer player. And uh, I have a Kabonk to be able to kill him next turn. So I definitely look to be in very good shape in this second match here. Yeah, Judgment is still 5 wins, 2 losses, whichever comes first. They did increase the rewards though. It used to be 5 wins, you get 2,500 gold and 6 scrolls from your deck you could choose. Now it is 3,500 gold and 7 scrolls. So now the rewards are even higher, and I might play this more, uh, just the rack of gold. And I think it's more fun. Um, very explosive, aggressive, fast games. And yeah, he, he also, that turn, he really positioned pretty badly because my Blast Auto was able to take out all those things. So you see, he doesn't really have a chance coming back in this. Plays down his last two creatures in his hand. And now it's back to my turn. And I can't really amass that much damage in a, in a turn without my Niara out. So I'm kind of just going turn from turn here, but then I do draw Niara, so that will surely be coming out as soon as I can, so I can start really doing a lot of damage. Uh, probably didn't a uh, position perfectly last turn because uh, now this turn my four attack Grave Lock Guard is open. But losing one creature is not the end of the world for me. He has Puppet Soldier, can't use it though. Just a lot of creatures in his deck that aren't gonna allow him to come back into the game. So he plays, and yeah, he's, he feels like Kiku is emptying his hand every single turn. Uh, so the game is really lost. I do get the uh, Niara out so I can hopefully win the following turn with all those creatures attacking. matter of time until I win this. Really can't get through any of the armor creatures either. He does have an Earth and Mirth, which he does play to take out one of those uh, blast automatons. But I think that's the game now, right? Or no, it wasn't, I don't think. You have to play... So I'm able to play two things with different subtypes, but the way I position and protect his idols, I don't think that's lethal. It was close to lethal. Unfortunately, it will take another turn. Especially with that Niara being relentless herself. Niara's really good. I didn't suspect that much for her when, he, when she came out, but really, she's just so good for the whole field. And then you forget herself, she's relentless and she gets really high attack. That's uh, great for a 6 drop. Uh, she's right on par with. Uh, 
Witch Doctor for like best six drop in the game now. Maybe better. And there I get a battle dance, so I just win the game. So I'm 2 0 with this deck in judgment, and we're gonna go to match three now. Next I go to uh, match against Doctor underscore Solus. Now I'm on the left side, and my avatar is on, my, on the left side, so all is well. Uh, I do mulligan, and I probably get a bat, uh, worse hand again. He seems to have a pretty aggressive start himself. A fertile soil to stay uh, ahead in cards, too. I get down the first creature, though. Grave block guard, able to ping some early damage. Always a nice turn to play. Uh, he'll have a nog of his own, or a wing soldier. Uh, goes with a nog because it has enough health to sur survive an attack from the grave block guard. Uh, I... Luckily draw a Sister of the Fox, so I can have it play this turn, and I draw a scroll. A little interesting move, I got rid of the champion ring there. I could have kept it and moved down so I can put the champion ring on my guard next turn and try to kill something. I just didn't bother that. I'd rather just stay up there and control the center of the board and keep paying his creatures down there, especially that scatter ground with only two health. And I, I'm pretty lucky now, I draw a pack husk. Uh, so I have a play this turn. I could have played Corpse Theft, but Corpse Theft is not that valuable on a creature. Uh, that costs less than four because then you're getting like not as much out of it. He gets like a bonk, come off on the sister of the fox, like whatever. Uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot. And he uh, draws a ripper, but he gets rid of it so he can sacrifice and play a wing soldier. So he does have more creatures on the board right now, so I'm kind of on the defensive. Uh, so I think I'm gonna just run away here. And I can finally play some of those big five drops. I'll start with the blast automaton because it's simply a uh, better uh, than the Night Sergeant, especially in this deck, because Night Sergeant kind of relies on other Knights. Blast Automaton or doesn't really rely on other Automatons. Well, I do have a Squire in this deck, so it wouldn't be all all alone. Just put some Asma, looking like it's just a wall. Uh, I only have one thing attacking, but that's a little tough. I uh, sacrifice your scrolls here, and I do draw a Battle Dance, and that was a nice draw because I'm able to just take out his, uh, is not. So I mean, I played a battle against to destroy one extra creature, but I think that was pretty big because that means I'm not set to lose any creatures this turn. And he does have a Kabonk, so he can take that out. And I see in his hand he has a Focus 2. Uh, so he can just play that, and then he would be able to take out my, uh, my, oh no. The Spectre was a little messed up here, or the replay. I looked like that. Looked like that Scattergun was glowing ready to attack, but he didn't. That's strange. But yeah, so I, never mind, he couldn't have taken out my Blast Automaton. He plays a Rat King, and now I wish I had a Thunder Surge. It's really strange, in these judgment matches, like, you can't really play around things. Like, you know how, like, in ranked, like, you might, like, not play two health creatures against Decay because of Soul Steel, not one uh, against Energy because of Thunder Surge, flood the board versus Growth, he's a Quake. But in this, you really have no idea what's going to come down, so you kind of just have to avoid nothing or avoid everything. I think it's easier to avoid nothing. So I just play and hope for the best. Uh, it's fun, though. And I got to come off there so I don't have to move down into that Relentless Unit's Wrath, uh, and I can control the board. A couple Grey Blocks down, a 5 cost Automaton. Things are looking up, and I have 7 Wilds, and he only has 6 Wild. Uh, he plays um, a couple more creatures. And now I'm looking for uh, more things that can help me out. Oh, interesting. In the replay, it only shows the person on the right's hand. So you couldn't really see how many scrolls are in the person on the left's hands on the person on the right's turn. That's uh, a little odd probably just overlooked. So all my, a bunch of my creatures are set to attack next turn and I have a Niara on the board. It doesn't seem like I protected my idols too well. I guess I could have gotten caught off guard and lost the game if I got really unlucky there. Uh, I play a uh, an oak with one creature, so one creature that's not on my side. Not that type is on my side. I only needed to play one because I just needed plus two attacks so I have to take out the brother of the wolf. And now, he has an Arbalest here, but he sacrifices it. I guess he doesn't think he has time to wait for an Arbalest here to count down. He doesn't have the things to count it down himself. 
but a Duke Infantryman definitely is good right here because it could take out the 8 health Relentless unit, but it's really not enough at this point in the game uh, because I have a Relentless Niara about to attack, which I will surely increase its attack. Um, I'm able to get it up to... I think only 6 attack, but it's enough to take out the attacking unit. And I have a ton of things attacking next turn, and I'll be able to increase the attack of everything again. Maybe just, we just saw the chat in game, we were, just complaining a bit, we were complaining a bit about the lag. The game feels like it has been laggy ever since Echoes came out. Uh, so hopefully that's gonna go away soon. And do I have game here? I don't think so, I'd have to play like a few more creatures. But, man, that sifting screen just pops up and pops and goes away. Uh, and I could get more, but I decided to just spark. I don't want to have to deal with that relentless unit. And I almost clear his board, and I do take out my first idol. So next turn, maybe I can win. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe draw a god hand or something. These double harvesters, uh, you can play them, but I'm not sure how it's going to help. And he goes ahead and plays the two of them and now I'm not really threatened so I can win the game if I just get something to attack and I do I get a god hand so that's cool I could actually destroy four idols here but the lag made me not move that aging knight up but it doesn't matter in judgment you don't get extra gold for destroying four two idols so I'm 3-0 now uh, with this judgment deck and on to uh, match four match four against uh, the great Franconi. Um, decent hand, but I decide to roll the dice with a mulligan and it probably becomes a worse starting hand. Seems like a theme of this judgment run, but it's all right. And he has the new Imperial Scepter, lots of lots of Echo Scrolls playing around in judgment. Well, I guess every time there's a new set in uh, scrolls, you'll see the scrolls a lot because the player, not the player, the the scroll, the number of scrolls in the game is not that high. What are they like? There's like 420 now or something. It's 420, then and 60 of them are echoes. There's still like a, there's still like a 13% chance a card is an echoes. So Franconi goes ahead and. Plays Proud Mercenary in the next turn, he'll have a Duke of uh, Spearman, so he has a decent start. Uh, my start isn't too bad. I'm hoping to top deck some things I can use. I do use Transposition just because I don't really have anything else to do, but I top deck a Champion Ring, so that was a good draw. Uh, had I known I was going to top deck a Champion Ring, I would have had it the other way around so I can get the Squire up there. Uh, it's ra I'd rather a 4 attack on a unit that has a lower countdown, but whatever. He does still play the Ducal Spearman, but I guess it wasn't all bad that I did it like that with the Aging Knight with 4 attack, because I'd rather lose the Aging Knight uh, to Spikey, and uh, now he's able to destroy it, the Spearman in one hit. I do get down the Blast Automaton. Blast Automaton, every game feel like they just like protect so well. Arm Unconditional Armor 2 is so good. We see Franconi has a Thunder Surge, so that is tough to play around in Judgment because he really can't expect them to have it, but oh boy, they could. I get another Blast Automaton, unfortunately, I drew it right away, so I had to sacrifice it, and uh, I play a Corpus Collector here, uh, nothing needing to be uh, even Corpse Theft just yet, and now I go up, I play, oh no, this is his turn, he plays a couple things. And I'm not sure if this is the game with a big, with a big uh, corpse theft bug, or the next game is. But there's a pretty huge bug that like broke. I think it's the next game. It broke the game. It might look really. F I guess I, I'll go. I'll talk about when that next game starts. Keep talking about this game. I do get a battle dance, which uh, is pretty good because I can take out that brother of the wolf. So that was another big turn. Battle dance. I think underrated by me. Uh, I thought, oh, they moved it to 4 energy, now nobody's going to play it over Fury. But it's still pretty good. It's almost like a 4 cost rally. Almost. <laughs> Not quite. There is an infected husk. And take that one of my creatures. 
Now, I have a bunch of things to play. I do get rid of those scholars. They're sacrificing scrolls for creatures that are attacking right now. So I have a lot of creatures that are attacking next turn, and one creature that can take damage. Sorry about this. And he plays a binding root on my, uh, whatever that's called. What's this thing called? Corpus Collector. Uh, but it's not really gonna stop him, he's just gonna run away. Uh, I can chase him with that husk. I have a Kabonk, which I sacrificed the scrolls because I didn't want to play it and then draw into, like, a Niara and be like, oh crap. Uh, but I do draw a couple structures that are good this turn. So the sacrifice of the Kabonk for scrolls rather than playing it, I guess I should say paid off. And now Franconi is definitely on the outside looking in, but this Thunder Surge kind of changes things. Uh, and he's able to take things out and all of a sudden I don't have that many creatures. Now here, I really wanted to keep hold of the spark so I can get rid of that, that thing up there. And I do get a Niara, but I make the mistake of playing it next to the Wildling, so I lose the Wildling. So that was a misplay by me. And he's able to take out my my Corpus Collector, but it was by me anyways. He uses the Infectious Blight on it. Uh, I think that's kind of odd. I mean, you could have just used the 3 attack and destroyed it. Or 2 attack and destroyed it, and then put the Infectious Blight straight on the Niara. Just to get it one less health or dying a little faster. I do a Purification for it, so... I'm glad I decided to include those in the deck. I use Spark and Purification, and it's good. Uh, unfortunately, the... Uh, Charge Claw does not hit the husk, which I wanted it to. And now he just goes really offensive here and tries to bowl me down with those one countdown. Uh, one countdown. What do you call this? Glasses. And now I'm looking for some kind of spell or enchantment to kill that rocking bird. I don't get it. But I do, I'm able to play a uh, couple creatures so I can sweep that row up. And I'm not really too worried, I'll lose a couple creatures here. But he'll lose one. And we're all good. He does have a Valent Dispersal though, which hurts quite a bit. It really can delay the game not having the Niara out. Oh! And here I get the Scholar. And there goes the, uh, yeah, Franconi did not notice <laughs> she was wrong. That's kind of overlooked about her. Like, she has all that other stuff, all those abilities, and then, oh, she's a relentless too. Definitely a very good creature. And here, Franconi just has to somehow get creatures on the board without them dying. Looks like I can win the game soon. I those aren't looking too hot. I do have a way to destroy at least one idol this coming turn. Um, champion ring as well. I sacrificed a champion ring. I missed lethal. Whoops, I did not notice that when I was playing. Just remember that now. Could have just played the champion ring on that, um, on this guy. Steal a vindicator and I would have had uh, enough attack to destroy the idol. So, yep. Even I missed lethal. I actually missed lethal more than a lot of other people. Um, Missing lethal isn't the worst thing in the world though, because usually when you miss lethal, you're ahead of the game, so you could still win the next turn or something. Sometimes it really comes back to haunt you though. Um, here, he did a good job of kind of defending, because he plays that Gloomstone Treaty, which makes it very hard for me to uh, break through his forces, knowing that so many of these revenants are going to be spawned. And. I do hope for the 1 in 3 chance of it hitting that, and it does, but then the still a Revenant that popped up. So he's able to take take down a couple of my creatures. A Swirling Smoke is a very big play here. It looks like I might have been able to win the game next turn, but that kind of slows me down. I, I definitely, I know Franconi wishes that Swirling Smoke worked on structures there so that the Nog Nest and the Charge Coil would slow down a bit, but alas it does not. Uh, just a freak squire turn. Nothing too special. I guess I could play the night sergeant knowing that the squire is on the field too. But I didn't. And now he 
opts to get rid of the Imperial Scepter, not finding a chance to put down a 5 cost structure. He did have a spark to take out that guy, that was really the biggest thing he has to do this turn, find a way to stop that guy. Uh, and now, I do draw God Hand, and here I make the mistake of not moving my freak out of the way, so I deny the birth of one Nog. Oh well, I don't have lethal. Uh, but I do uh, destroy a bunch of stuff on his side, and the charcoal attack before the elder, and it did hit the revenant on the bottom, so it got me to deal five damage to the bottom idol. So two of his idols are very low. He gets another thunder surge, or I guess the same thunder surge, I think, and plays a couple creatures. Three creatures. Up, oh, he empties his hand besides the thunder surge. All up there positions in a way so the gloomstone treaty can do well i sacrifice your scrolls not getting like a battle dance or anything so it's just another turn of creature dance so, yeah that misleaf look did cost me some time i probably could have ended this game five minutes earlier and there's there's the thunder so she doesn't really have a chance to play it that's the problem so he just goes ahead and violent dispersals on the gravelock elder Still has one more turn on the Bloomstone Treaty. Uh, but because the Bounce dispersal, dispersal went on the Elder, my Gravelock ra uh, Freak got to attack because of the damage it took. And I play a couple things, including a uh, Corpse Theft just because. And here we see I actually get a little uh, lucky with the Charge Girl here to the bottom there, which means I can win the game. So, I'm surprised when I didn't go out there. Uh, but yeah, so that's the fourth win with this deck, so I'm 4-0 so far. Let's see about the fifth game. Alright, game five. I'm on the right side, he's on the left side, but my avatar is on the left. And actually, I'm not sure if that's his avatar. Feels like every single game so far, my opponent has had this avatar. Maybe a bug. And he has a similar deck to me, it looks like. Gravelock Guard, Blast Automaton. Seems like these are all just crazy decks because they could they could work off any uh any resource. I wish that you know maybe when people play Ultimate Highlander versus each other, it's gonna be different. And maybe we'll play the custom game mode where you can. I think a custom match setting is you can have Wild be like you can sacrifice it any time, like like it is in Judgment. So then we'll see some crazy Ultimate Highlander games. Uh, and he definitely gets to a faster start, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe uh, I won't get the 5-0 sweep. And he, uh, yeah, just goes to Brother Wolf, and the next turn he's a Blast Automaton. Not looking too good. I... I... Do I have a play this turn? I just have a Kabonk, and I don't draw anything useful, so definitely not looking too good. He's able to destroy... My pack husk, oh, I will draw a scroll from it. He gets rid of his Nuru. Plays a Blast Auto. And it's a Lone Sister of the Fox versus four decent creatures. And I just have to start building up my forces. I do put the Blast Auto on right in front. I'm thinking, if I'm going to win this game, I have to protect all my creatures and hope it doesn't have a random like focus to kill me. And luckily for me, no focus. Uh, does he even... And he even uh, summons a wolf, so he doesn't deal any damage to my uh, my big guy. Does have a morbid curiosity, but obviously wouldn't be without killing anything this turn. And now it is my turn. I get a chance to put a creature down. I just get down that Niara as fast as I can. I know to come back into this game, I need that Niara. She is just so good, so good. Uh, Voidhead gets rid of the morbid curiosity. Gets a couple, couple of nice scrolls, nice removal type things, but not enough to destroy my my guy. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what his name is. Uh, Blast on one's on. Now Inferno Blast is going to be able to kill it next turn, but I don't think I don't see that. I do play the. Uh, Battle Dance there, which is a pretty huge turn for me, because I'm also able to play Asian Knight, which increases all my attack, and I'm able to just take the top of the board. That was a big turn. He was leading this whole game, and now all of a sudden it looks like I'm in the lead, when that with that big Niara play. 
and uh, Battle Dance. Uh, he does have an Inferno Blast though, and it looks like I have a lot of creatures that have one health. But he's wise and he does not need to play it this turn because none of my creatures look like they're attacking. He's not expecting another Battle Dance or a Rally or something. Um, and uh, his Gravelock Guard Pillage Ping did hit uh, my Aging Knight, which brings it down to one. And I'm playing completely into uh, into a Inferno Blast. I didn't know it at the time, but this Inferno Blast really, really looks like it's going to help him. Destroys three of my five creatures. Um, and brings that Niara down to two. Oh, it stops her from attacking. So now it looks like Floyd heads back in the lead. Both of us have pretty powerful decks, pretty similar decks, battling it out, slugging it out. I uh, do have a purification, so I can get rid of the get rid of the uh, Southwood Advance, which I was considering doing. I knew I'd have to do it eventually before it attacked, but I didn't want to because it might have just gotten sparked anyways. And I see Floyd Head did have a spark, and he does use it so not to uh not to uh good decision for me playing the purification so quickly kind of just wasted a scroll and here is where the crazy bug comes in it's gonna happen fast but in real time when i was playing the game it took a long time to develop there's that ace moron scholar right there when it comes into play you you he goes into uh, you get to sift, so I give it a corpse stuff, so when I kill it, I get one of my own. And now, uh, you, you can't see it. So what happened there, is it skipped his turn. <laughs> I figured out how to skip somebody's turn. Uh, what happened was, it went to his turn, but the sifting, in, in game, I had a sifting screen on my screen. And... Remember, I'm on the right side in this game, but I, in the real game, I was the left side. So I had a sifting sh sifting screen on my screen, but then I couldn't click it. I kept on clicking to draw the god hand or whatever, and it wouldn't let me. So I was like, what's going on? So let me type in chat, though. You could read our chat. Uh, can we see the chat? I guess if you open this, you can see the chat. So it's a pretty game-breaking bug there. And then I couldn't pick anything but he couldn't do anything on his turn he couldn't sacrifice he couldn't do anything uh so it kind of by doing that i basically just skipped his turn then when it went to my turn again i could do stuff so before the bug gets uh bug gets fixed if you're in a match and you have a uh corpse theft and your opponent plays a uh ace Warren scholar kill it during the combat phase when it has corpse theft on it and you can skip your opponent's turn so he gets armor units out, a lot of armor 2 units. Looks like it's in my advantage. I made a slight error a couple turns ago. Uh, not playing a Stitcher on the turn with the Scholar as well. Uh, misjudge my sacrificing. And I might be missing lethal here, I'm not sure. Uh, I do have a god hand. Right now I'm not really paying attention to the game because I'm just like... Like, just like... Telling people about this crazy bug. I just found out. It turns out, I, I think some other people already found it out. But skipping the opponent's turn is certainly uh, a very powerful bug. Um, now I'm finally separating from things like Inferno Blast and Thunder Surge. Inferno Blast still gets to me. And he gets a deathly grasp on that. Uh, so, with Slayer, he's pretty cool. He is able to. Oh no, that didn't work! Slayer does not work with um, with the one physical damage thing. And here's where I probably could have won. Yeah, I could have won there. But I instead almost get a sword, which is, could have been really bad for me. It's just like a, he had like a boosted beam potion, Duke Fisherman, that would have been game for him this turn. So I should have won there. Yeah, Void Head saw I could have won. So, but no, a pretty big miss lethal there. This one could have come back about me because I left an idol open up there. Uh, but luckily he did not, he was not able to win that turn, so now I'm just like, oh crap, let's finish up and spark that and protect that top idol. So things are looking on the up, so I do win this game, uh, very shortly. So 5-0 in, uh, Judgment, my first Echo's Judgment. Goes ahead and join you. That is win number 5. And sometimes you ask me how I pick rewards, so here it is. Uh, not very exciting. You'd get 3,500 gold and 7 scrolls. Uh, 
in the new judgment. Um, so that's quite a haul. Uh, I go ahead and take the pack husk, uh, just because it's probably the best common that I have. I don't know. I'm not gonna go check on the black market. I see what's worth the most. Uh, just pushing out with the steel wood there. Um, so you have to take two commons, uh, one uncommon, uh, or actually two uncommons, um, blast auto as well, and then three rares. So I guess one more uncommon scroll than how Judgment used to be. So that'll be it for the video. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content. Leave the content. Leave feedback below if you like this format of Judgment where I use the game replays and post commentate. So follow on Twitch, follow on Twitter, Nerf the Ninja and all the stuffs. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep on scrolling, scrollgers.